Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me for the keynote for uh, this uh, OECD uh, uh, meeting. I think this is a very timely and it's very important uh, because of this uh, impact that the generative AI and associated the uh, uh, evolution of the data technology will give to the society and the industry. Uh, so, uh, you know, what I want to uh, uh, stage here is like a, a somewhat like a recap of what the uh, people uh, is thinking or like, uh, you know, arguing at, at this moment. I think it would like to set the tone or like raise some issue uh, uh, for the further discussions. I think like the impact of generative AI is tremendous in a way that the I see this is a potentially the equivalent to invention of internal combustion engine or semiconductor or the internet. I think we're looking into the emergence, emergence of technology or the tool that gave like a high level of intelligence uh, at, uh, in some aspect. I think, uh, you know, industry will transform uh, quite rapidly and uh, quite uh, radically. And that's something we are witnessing today. And so, you know, I think this is really the opportunity at the same time because of the impact of the technology, I think uh, we need to uh, manage the uh, risk as well. Uh, at the same time, this is a really the beginning of the transformation. You know, as we all know, uh, you know, the chat GPT became very famous at the same time, like a stable diffusions and other uh, regenerative AI, uh, you know, is uh, in the market at this moment. But like we know, uh, performance is very good, very impressive. At the same time, there are a lot of issues. And, uh, you know, at the same time, like uh, all the developers and the users uh, will recognize the risk. So uh, I think like, uh, people working day and night, how to fix that problem as well. At the same time, what's beyond uh, generative AI is I uh, predict, I will say, uh, there will be uh, AI to be able to make a scientific discovery, uh, greater engineering design, and uh, much more uh, truly creative task that the uh, uh, human is good at, at this moment. But I think we'll be going to move into the uh, human AI uh, symbiotic uh, intelligence uh, in the future. I think that is the uh, uh, direction which uh, I uh, expect uh, in the coming uh, years. Now, the three issues in the uh, large scale AI uh, right now, uh, I think like uh, we have like an issue of dominance, like uh, only the uh, big companies, uh, big tech company will be able to create the uh, uh, decent high performance uh, AI system uh, because of the uh, scale of data and the uh, scale of computing that requires. At the same time, there are biases and the issue of the authenticity, where the data comes from. At the same, you know, the third aspect is accuracy, uh, whether the, uh, you know, the uh, accurate answer will be provided uh, as well. So I think those are the things that people uh, commonly recognize these days, but just like uh, uh, make sure, that, uh, uh, you know, this to be a, uh, uh, on the stage of the discussion. So uh, this is a uh, you know very famous uh, paper on the uh, you know uh, showing the emergent behavior of the large scale language model, and then uh, which actually showing the uh, unexpected emergent behavior when it the, uh, goes beyond the. Uh, uh, training flops uh, of the 10 to power 22 to 24 region, which is like a tremendous amount of computing. And in order to have like a, you know, decent uh, LMM, uh, large scale uh, language model uh, to be useful, uh, need to achieve uh, this level of uh, training, uh, uh, you know, uh, computing amount, uh, you know, uh, for the training. And this is very expensive and then the resource demanding. So like if you want to uh, retrain or create a new one and you have to secure the computing resource and data and you have to run. Uh, so I, this is like a only handful of company uh, may be able to do this. Uh, if that is, you have to train, retrain from the scratch. Uh, so this is really the issue of the, uh, uh, you know, only handful of uh, uh, company will be to have like a joining uh uh, generative AI model. Uh, unless we have like a very different algorithm or approach to be able to significantly reduce the uh, amount of training uh, required. Now, now, second aspect is the uh, uh, bias. You know, this is very interesting uh, one as well. Like uh, this uh, one I created like uh, uh, about a month ago. And then I uh, used the stable diffusion as an example. I will see that uh, similar problem in a different generative model. Uh, when I uh, just the uh, uh, type in the Saraswati temple in the Bari, and I try many times. This is the best image I got. Uh, but of course, if you know the uh, real Saraswati temple in Bari, uh, this is not really, you know, 
it resembles a small part of that, but it's really dramatically different from the reality. Now, if we get the Noto Dam, it's one shot. Uh, you got this. Okay, it's not exactly uh, correct, you know, but at the same time, it's 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 good enough, you know, in in a, as a first shot. So I think this really represents the amount of data uh, that the uh, you know, for example, like a stable diffusion has in the uh, you know all the architectural uh, site uh, in a region, for example, like Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and then other places as well. I think it's just like only representative. So that means the uh, if you wants to enjoy the benefit of the uh, generative AI model. Uh, either the image or the language, uh, underrepresent the region or underrepresent the culture, we will not be able to, uh, you know, enjoy the uh, power of the regenerative AI uh, system if that is trained in a relatively uh, biased way. Now, at the same time, you know, that means like if someone intentionally create the uh, content that actually wants to uh, to be regenerated by the generative AI, you can actually uh, sneak in a very large amount of a specific type of data, expecting, uh, you know, uh, that would be used for the training. And then uh, generative AI maybe uh, just uh, uh, generate the uh, kind of intentionally biased uh, output uh, because like uh, original data, uh, training data would be uh, uh, manipulated in, in a way. I mean, uh, it would be very difficult to have that in a large scale uh, data, but when if you have like a very small uh, sample available in specific issues, you can probably manipulate that. So I think like, uh, uh, you know, not only bias is an issue, but like if you have like a, a smaller uh, data set in specific topic, you can actually intentionally sneak in that specific type of like a data to manipulate the uh, learning process as well. Now, next one uh, is the uh, data authenticity, where this like, uh, uh, data comes from, whether the, uh, you know, intellectual properties and then, uh, uh, you know, all those issues, all the legal actions going on. I hope this is going to be solved sooner than later, but at the same time, right now, uh, this is an issue. At the same time, like where the data come from, the other issue is like, uh, you know, when the uh, generative AI generates specific uh, contents, then the, whether that is uh, very close to the, what uh, someone created, then it's really uh, close that, you know, might have like uh, all the, uh, uh, you know, copyright issues and other issues as well. I mean, this is the how users uh, need to be uh, uh, well aware of. And uh, I think this is the uh, issue uh, to be uh, uh, in one side uh, to be uh, uh, solved as the, uh, uh, either legal or like, uh, uh, you know, the best practice. Uh, and the other side is like, we need to uh, have awareness of the uh, uh, users. Now, at the same time, you know, generative AI is not the only AI which is making the progress. For example, like this is some of the example, uh, which uh, is a more or less like a, a straight deep learning uh, to be able to control the uh, uh, using a reinforcement running uh, to be able to control the tokamak plasma. This is the uh, joint with the uh, deep mind and uh, I think uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, you know, of, uh, energy, uh, you know, researchers, and as well as a very famous example, the Alpha Fold 2, uh, uh, dramatically changed the landscape for the uh, biology and then uh, uh, drug discovery process as well. And then also, like an interesting one, this is for the Meta, uh, the uh, uh, Kikero, uh, which is actually uh, winning uh, uh, AI system in the diplomacy. I, I think I, I find this very interesting because uh, most of AI. Uh, has been used to outperform the human to, uh, you know, uh, better than human. But, like, uh, you know, in diplomacy, you have to be better than human in convincing other, uh, you know, game players rather than, you know, outperforming it. So, like, uh, you know, it's the AI system to be able to verbally, uh, you know, convince the other players, other human players, is, I think, something very interesting. And sometimes, like, uh, it will be uh, alarming uh, as well. And uh, so I think this is a very uh, interesting uh, issues as well. In overall, uh, we see uh, uh, quite significant progress at the same time that, uh, you know, certain uh, risk associated uh, with them. Now, uh, you know, I think in, in summary, uh, what we are witnessing right now is the, uh, you know, I think we are seeing the birth of the one of the most critical technology in the history. And comparable to the internal combustion in semiconductor internet, as I uh, mentioned, and uh, so like we should take advantage of the opportunity. And at the same time, like uh, you know, I think this is like uh, right now what we are seeing, like a uh, chat GPT or stable diffusion, I mean, Jania, those technologies, uh, not really like a mature technology yet. I think this is the very early stage, beginning of the uh, new era of the AI, uh, you know, technology. I think. Uh, 
uh, we have more uh, to come. I think we should uh, explore the uh, potential uh, for the uh, emerging class of technology as well. So, uh, but at the same time, of course, like, uh, you know, already it seems to have like, uh, you know, quite substantial uh, impact to the uh, society and the industry. So it's better, uh, you know, of course, we should uh, make a best effort to uh, uh, reduce the uh, misuse of the technology. So the, interestingly, last, uh, I think last October, Europol issued the uh, report that the uh, for the uh, criminal investigations, the, all the generated contents might confuse the uh, investigators. You guys know, should be uh, careful whether the, all the digital uh, evidence is uh, genuine or like uh, uh, generated uh, by the uh, uh, some of the uh, AI uh, you know platform. As well. At the same time, the impact is global. It can't really contain the local. At the same, therefore, like uh, the benefit to AI if you enjoy that, I think that goes to the uh, uh, around the globe. Uh, that means we should have like a balanced data set and then access and then, uh, you know, all kind of uh, uh, bias uh, need to be uh, uh, minimized. And then I think we need the uh, concerted effort uh, to be able to achieve this. And then also it would be good to have a, a reasonable guideline on how to, uh, you know, achieve that. Now, at the same time, we are facing the, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of challenge. I mean, all the climate issues and the resource issues and then uh, uh, all the uh, pandemic issues as well. So I think we need uh, this uh, new technology to be able to find a solution. So we should, uh, I think we need AI uh, to be able to uh, solve some of the issues or at least mitigate it. And so I, I think like uh, we should really push the AI research, uh, you know, uh, faster than before. Uh, at the same time, like, you know, then uh, I think we just not just a scale, but I think some of the algorithms, some of the idea need to be implemented on top of the current uh, generative AI because like, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, it's more the statistical, me uh, stochastic mechanism that is generating it. Uh, we need more legit uh, logic and reasoning and then, uh, you know, how to check the, uh, all the factual uh, evidence and data, uh, you know, or like a generating a real, truly, uh, you know, creative hypothesis as well. So I think like, uh, you know, we, you know, I expect like the next three to five years, we're going to see the more of the, uh, uh, you know, new AI algorithm our approach uh, that will address uh, those issues to be uh, truly uh, useful and bring the AI technology to the next stage. Now, I think like uh, in a way, uh, this now like because of ChatGPT and other um, uh, you know uh, emerging the uh, generative AI, this became like a you know public uh, uh, issue. So everyone talking about it. Uh, that means that like, trust in the AI is very essential to be able to use this. Uh, uh, in a large scale, in a more critical part of the industry and society. Uh, therefore, uh, AI ethics and, uh, uh, you know, all the uh, privacy protections and then the issue of their bias and the dominance and the other issues uh, need to be properly addressed. And then I think that is the, uh, you know, very important for us to uh, get the uh, AI in the public and then pro uh, expect, expect, accept, accept, acceptance and as well as the, uh, to be, uh, 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 consistent with the, all the uh, policy decision making uh, in our uh, Asian government sectors. Uh, so I think I'm going to stop here, but I think this is like OECD panel today is extremely timely. And then, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, I expect a very useful and productive dialogue uh, in, in this uh, uh, rest of the session today. Well, thank you very much.